here, and in my quest for coffee, because when we're at RVing or when we're at home, I really enjoy a cup of coffee. And having a nice, fresh, fresh cup of coffee is just a good way to start the day for me. And we've tried different things. We've tried drip makers, uh, little uh, uh, Keurigs, two different Keurigs. But I just picked this up yesterday. It's a Cafetera Electrica Para Espresso Maker. It's easier in English, though. It's an electric espresso maker. It's kind of like a little mocha pot, but it's electric. And the really cool thing about it is that it uses only 480 watts of power. That's really pretty reasonable. Our Keurig was 1,470 watts. So if you have a 2,000 watt inverter, just turn on that coffee maker, was just about maxing it out. This is 480 watts. So let's just take it out of the box and look at it. And I have to admit, I've already done this because I've already enjoyed a cup of espresso this morning. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the box. You get a box and an owner's manual. Oops, all right. This is the little pot. The little base that it goes on. And you basically unscrew this. So this is the, the pot that it goes into when it's made. And this down here, they call this a boiler. This gets really, really hot. Uh, when it's making coffee, this is basically a pot of boiling water. So you don't want to touch it like this because if you're making coffee with it, it would be the same as having a little kettle of water on the stove. You don't walk up and grab a pot off the stove like this. If you did, you'd have the same experience by grabbing that. So do not touch that. When it's, when it's working, this thing is really, really hot, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to... Let me get some water here. All right. So what, this is a little over valve. And if you fill too much water, this is like a safety release valve, opposite side of it. Inside you can see a max fill line. So what you do is you fill it up to the max fill. Like such. And then this is where you put your coffee grounds. If you're gonna make six cups of espresso, which is not six cups of coffee, because you know, six cups of coffee wouldn't fit in there, but six cups of espresso, well, they're little tiny things. So if you're gonna make a full pot of six, you would just fill this up with coffee. If you're only gonna do a half a pot and make three, you put this in here like that, and you put the coffee in it. So we're gonna get some coffee and do that Hang on. okay so this is the coffee it's cafe bustello it's like uh cuban style or it's just nice espresso coffee so i've already opened up one of them because like i said i already made some coffee earlier today and it's really this is fine you probably should have one with a little bit more medium uh, medium uh, grind this is really the fine grain but we're gonna make a uh, three cup. So you just get out the coffee here and basically put it in there like that. Could use a little bit more. You don't want to pack it down, but you want to kind of fill it up flat. A little bit that over the side. And now you just drop this into the thing here and let me get a paper towel and make a little wet spot there. All right, so you drop the, the little basket in there and you screw the lid on. And you want it tight, but not real tight. You just want to make sure it's nice and good and snug. 
And then there's a little safety switch here that when you pick the pot up, it turns off. Right here is this little, little safety switch. So when you put the pot on there, if the pot's full of water, it'll push it down. If the pot's empty, it really won't. And now we're gonna plug it in. And like I said, you don't touch this when it's cooking because- It's not down very good. Yes, it's down good enough. See, the, the little red light came on. Okay. And it's gonna take about three minutes, about three minutes for it to make coffee. And you're supposed to leave this lid shut because steam's gonna come out, but I'm a renegade. Don't do this at home, folks. I'm gonna leave this open, and that way you can see when the coffee comes out, how it just pours out of this, this uh, tower inside there. But you wanna really leave it shut because a lot of steam and you could scald yourself. So don't do this at home. Uh, I'm a renegade. So now we just have to wait for coffee. And it takes about three minutes. You think it's not doing anything. Oh, and probably I would have that aimed oh, to the rear too. Let me just do that real quick, like, at least that way. Cause some steam comes out of there, I think. Mm, it's been about what, a minute and a half now, I guess. It seems like a long time but once it starts making coffee, it just pours out of that thing. I mean, it just, it's amazing how quick the coffee comes out of there once it reaches that point. It's in there getting really hot. It's building up pressure in there. And um, it's just gonna all of a sudden be espresso. So what are the pros and cons of using this in an RV where you have limited storage space and limited uh, yeah. water and limited Preparation area. Yeah, that's what's, what's the pros and cons. Do you think that's what's really nice about it is the fact that it's so small. I mean, it's there's there's what we take right now. Mm -hmm. This Keurig. We and have the, taken the Mr. Coffee. We've taken the Mr. Too. Coffee before. So like if you, oops, we're still kind of plugged in right here. I think they are. Yeah, we're still plugged in. So like if you compare it to a Mr. Coffee, and this is a small Mr. Coffee. This is yeah. a tiny one. Look at the size difference. Yeah, it does make a, a very um, condensed or strong pot of um, coffee products. So oh, yeah. Obviously, espresso. So this morning we noticed that you didn't have to put very much espresso in your cup. If you are if you like to just normally drink coffee, you mm -hmm. put about half a yeah, you can cup make, of you can actually make milk a, or cream, like mm -hmm. cafe latte. Yeah, you could do that or you could do what they call like a cafe a coffee americano right where you take this oh it is making a little noise where you put the espresso in a cup along with some other hot water and kind of reduce it a little bit mm -hmm. but okay it's making a little bit of noise it's getting close to i th i think the only the pros are it's it's small it can be broken down from this and mm -hmm. be even smaller than that which is really good for storage that's excellent and you don't have to take filters with you Coffee filter. No, no coffee filter because it has a little filter in it. Yeah, and I noticed that no grains, no coffee grounds came through into the espresso. It was really, right. it was good that way. No, no uh, grains in it or grounds in it. The only downside I might say is it's, well, it's not. Wasn't that hard to clean? No. You have to if you have a a little Mister Coffee, you still have to dump out the filter and the, the grounds. Grain. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to dump out the grounds here. You just it's just a little messy. Just a little bit. And compared, then wash to the, it. compared to the Keurig. Keurig's, yeah. Keurig. Yeah, because we're, we're used to using the Keurig. No yeah. cleanup there. Yeah, the Keurig, you just take the pot out and throw it away. But they do say that you have to wash this espresso maker. Oh, here we go. Look, here comes the coffee. And dry it. Look, look at it. It just pours out of there. I know. It's like a uh, chocolate fountain. Yeah, it's a, it's a coffee fountain. And once it's done with this little expulsion of coffee you have to turn the switch off yeah. it was good coffee this morning mm -hmm. it was really good yeah and it's almost done all right so there we go and now it's all that noise it, it means it's done so you turn this off you see right there you turn that off and I'll just close that. Keep it warm for us yeah. to enjoy. But uh, let's see. 
Yeah, I can't think of really any cons. I think it's um, the size and the power usage is what makes it great for RVing, in my opinion. I'm gonna pour that into a coffee cup here. Oh, look at that. Wow, this is from the Grand Canyon National Park right there. Sure is. So watch this now. When you pick this up, the entire unit comes up. And watch that coffee. Look how dark that is, boy. That right there. Actually, it's not even a full coffee cup. Yeah. Well, yeah. But we have enough milk, it'll be great. Yeah, but, and this would also have been stronger because I actually used a full pot of water when I should have used a little less water because I only used the um, the three cup, you know, the, uh, the I had the plate in there. Oh, you did? Yeah, just to show that, but there it is. That's still has some pretty stout coffee. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, this is really hot. You don't want to touch that right now, but you don't need to because the time right now is to have your coffee. After you have coffee and breakfast, this will be cooled down and you can take it apart and clean up and I'll do that in a few minutes, so stand by. All right, so now it's time to clean up and it's it's still kind of warm, but it's touchable, okay? So what you do, oh, and when, when you're not using it, always unplug that too. It's got that safety in it, but eh, but you know, it's always a little extra precaution. So to clean it up, Grab the bottom, grab the top, give it a little untwist there. You screw this off. There we go. And you see this has got like a filter strainer here. So we're gonna take that and we'll just rinse it off in the sink. And we'll rinse this out. That was just a quick little rinse. We'll all wash it out a little bit better later on. But got that rinsed out. Now this is the coffee thing. This is where it's easier just to kind of flip it over actually to get it out. And you can see there's the, the boiler. We'll rinse that out in a second. And then here's the coffee grounds that come out. So it also has that little shelf in there, like that. It's a little messy, you know, but I mean, it's, it's not that end of the world, you know? So there we go. So that's what it looks like when you- Paper towel. When you get all the grounds out of it. I wish we bought stock in the paper towel business before yeah. we started RVing. We used a lot of those things. Oh, yeah. I, was, I love paper towels. So, you know, you can just take it and kind of just give it a good little wipe out like that. And uh, that way, as much of the grounds won't go into your gray tank if you're in an RV like us. So that's pretty cleaned out to the point where we can rinse it out. And then just wipe this off a little. Okay, so there's your coffee grounds, and that's this is the um, the super fine ground um, espresso mix. So we're just gonna throw that in the trash. And I got a little bit here. Put that in the trash can. All right. So now this to, to finish up, I would just take it and. Put it in the sink. Give it a little rinse out. Put the strainer. Rinse there. And then give this a little rinse out here too. And you don't want to submerge this in water, but just rinsing it out is okay. Hey, look, more paper towels. I go through a lot of paper towels. Um, they're handy. Maybe not so good for the environment, but you know, 
I don't use soap too, so that's good. I mean, you know, if you have these cloth things, you have to use soap and water and all that. So who knows? There it is. Yeah, I think they're biodegradable. I don't believe yeah. they last very long in the landfill. Yeah. And you can burn them too if you felt like it. Yeah, you can make that. That'd be a, good for the environment. Yeah. <laughs> get a little bonfire, in the, get your burn barrel out. Yeah, start Burn your paper trash. Okay, so there we go. That's the little Emusa Cafetera. It's to English. The little Emusa Electric Espresso Maker. 480 watts. And I bought this at Kroger. They, no, Publix. I bought it at Publix. And they had it on sale for $20.49, I think it was. It was like less than $21. Um... I've seen some people talking about buying them on Amazon uh, that or different stores for like $28 and $30, but for $21. Bucks. And it's got a one-year warranty, 480 watts. That's the really cool thing if you're an RV or not much power. I mean, even if you only have a 1,000-watt inverter, you can still make coffee with an electric coffee maker in the morning. So thanks for watching, and have a great day. Go out, see America. Uh, never know what you're going to find and you can have a cup of coffee as you're going down the road. So take care, everybody. Goodbye.